at number 10. We're going to get right to it. Um, ex kind of teammate of mine, ex guy I, I've worked with a lot, Tay Oscar Hernandez of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Um, the World Wait, Series champion. Brooklyn, have you got to throw it out there? You're Brooklyn. So Brooklyn Dodger, um, World Series champion. He was Blue Jay, Dodger now. A uh, huge piece of this Dodgers team. Um, he was an MVP candidate throughout most of all the season, especially while their real MVPs were getting hurt and out for games and uh, deciding to try to rehab from Tommy John. I mean, all this stuff. He just constantly just carried this team. Not only did he carry this team, everybody loves him. He obviously, if you saw his, uh, you know, his little press conference that he had at the parade, he loves the Dodgers. He wants to be a Dodger. For me, he's going to be a Dodger. I don't think there's any question that he's going to stay with Los Angeles. And I'm putting him at $100 million over the next four years. He is 32 years old, so I can't give yes. him any longer than that. Uh, obviously, this really is going to rely on whether or not the Dodgers get Juan Soto. I don't think that's going to happen. I still have Juan Soto going somewhere else. There's a few different options that I think that Juan Soto would go to before. But T. Oscar just fits in LA. He looks like he's the glue to that team. Yeah, you have, you know, Mookie Betts. Yeah, you have Shohei Otani, but they really, really needed him in the playoffs and down the stretch. This is the guy. There's no reason to go after him. What do you think about a hundred years for a hundred million for four years for the Oscar? I, I think that's fair. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. So you're looking at an AAV of $25 million. I think it's simple. I think he's a guy that's been producing. I don't want to go with him. I think you, you said it right. He's 32. I don't want to go more than four years. And I, I might be eating the one, you know, one year on that contract a little yep. bit. Uh, at the same time, his production is, has just been so good. Um, and he's in this lineup. It, it, it fits really well. Again, he's got a 10 war or 17 war. And he, he has four of that in this year. Mm -hmm. um, so you just know it works in this lineup. He's had some great years in the past with Toronto. He had some good years with, with Houston. He, you know, he was there for a little bit, but really this last year. And I mean, for me, I, I think that's a great number. And I think it's a perfect fit in LA. I wouldn't change a dang thing if I'm the Dodgers. And it does, it's not going to take a giant pocketbook to get him. Uh, if he doesn't stay in the Dodgers, let's just say for shits and giggles that the Dodgers signed Juan Soto. Give me some options where you think Teoscar would really fit. Well, you know, here, here's the thing. When I'm looking at Teoscar too, this is an interesting thing. The one thing I said too is like the Royals need some veterans. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm looking at too, depending on Santander, like it might be a Baltimore thing. Get him in the outfield there. Yep. Baltimore's got some interesting questions and um, veteran leadership things. I, I think the Royals, I think Baltimore might be good fit. And um, you, might, you never know. There's always a dark horse out there in the, the Red Sox. Let's not forget the Yankees. The Yankees, if they lose Soto, they're going to need someone to patrol in right field. And Teoscar, he's... You know, he's going to come at a, a reasonable contract. He is the type of guy who can really thrive over there. He did it in L.A. There's no reason why he can't do it in New York. I think the Yankees would be a good possibility for him as well. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. So, Teoscar Hernandez, your prediction is the Dodgers for four years, $100 million. Uh, but there's a lot of places. I think, I think he's definitely going to have a lot of phone calls. Um, Absolutely. Don't think contracts going to be that long, but a lot of phone calls. Our number nine is a Cy Young winner from the Ohio's uh, Guardians, Shane Bieber. Um, this dude is was an absolute stud a couple of years ago. Um, great pitcher, great stuff. Twenty nine years old, going to be turning uh, uh, thirty here, you know, in the next season. Um, absolute great pitcher, great stuff. Spent most all of this entire season hurt. Came back, pitched a couple of games. Um, but this dude is a stud. Yeah, he's an absolute stud. I know his velocity was down a little bit, uh, but hopefully, you know, post-surgery, he's going to be, you know, back. His velocity could tick up a little bit. Uh, because of the health issues, I have him signing a two-year deal with the section, his second year being a player option. I would give him, if I was a GM, I would give him two years, 38 million, 18 for the first, and then 20 for the player option in the second. Two years, 38, that's all you, you think he's going to get? Yeah, I don't think, because of the injury history, I think people are going to be a little afraid. Plus, he had the little dip in velocity. 
it's going to be a show me contract for Bieber. I would love to get him. And honestly, I think he is destined to be a Met. If you saw what they did last year with their rotation, this is the type of guy that I think Stearns would really go after. I think the Guardians would like him. Um, th there's a few teams that should really go after him. I, you know, the Orioles, if they lose Burns, if, if they lose Corbin Burns, this is somebody they should definitely be going after. I uh, see the. I, uh, again, I, I do think the Guardians, again, this is a great place for the, for the Guardians to be able to step up here and, and keep a man. He's been there forever. Uh, I don't, I think he's going to get a heck of a lot more than two year contract, personally. Young enough, um, coming off of Tommy John, yes, there's going to be the dip and all that stuff. But right before that, he was the best pitcher in baseball. I, I, I see him getting a, a three or four year, even probably even five year. Now, again, I do think there's going to be some stuff in there, some stuff to maybe protect teams a little bit. It might be more of an incentive base, but but again, this guy was a Cy Young winner, so probably not. He's going to have some straight up money. Um, I do like your idea with the Mets. I think this is a good spot. The Mets have to rebuild their entire rotation. It's a good place to be. It's not going to be crazy expensive, but it will cost a good amount of money. Uh, for me, especially, I don't know. I, I look at it this. If I'm a team, he is exactly the type of guy I'm circling going it's going to be affordable at the same time. He was great a year ago. And Tommy John, again, he came back from Tommy John. He's already gone through that process. Now we're going to be, be sitting there and looking at him saying, okay, he's going to be a difference maker when he comes, when he when he's full out and full back. So I, I, want, I want Shane Bieber on my team. And maybe mm -hmm. the first year won't be a, like beautiful and gorgeous and amazing stuff. That second year, third year, fourth year, I think he's going to be good. Another team that I would look out for, possibly San Francisco. If they end up losing Blake Snell, yes. they're going to need to get a big-time pitcher to go in there. The Giants have the money. Uh, they like these kind of players. I can definitely see Bieber as a San Francisco Giant as well. But my pick would be the Mets with this guy. And he's a guy who's originally from California, too. So, I mean, Southern California. But, like, that's one of those things would be a, a, a great fit. I, I think he is a California kind of guy. I'm totally up for it. All right, number eight might be the most underrated baseball player in all of Major League Baseball in all the world. This dude is an absolute stud, Anthony Santander, um, Santander, whatever you want to call him. If you did not ever hear an announcer say his name, you'd have no idea how to say. It. But what Anthony Santander, bank? what? What about Santander Bank? Santander Bank. I do the. It, it, yeah, it, it there, works. Whatever. There is a bank called Santander, so I know it just off of the bank. Maybe it's an East Coast thing. I don't know. Liar. Anyways, <laughs> this dude, the one thing you do know is when he's parking baseballs into the outfield, when you're out there getting souvenirs, you know him. And you, you know him strongly. It is pretty sad that his war is 2.9. That is disrespecting this man and what he is capable of uh, he at, there at times has single-handedly kept baltimore into it this season as well with all the star power and all the young studs this dude just kept crushing the ball he has had a couple of years that are just insane numbers i give i i respect this guy so much for what he's done under the radar and like in an american league east in right field which is just pure power dudes this was the best one of them uh, soto's great soto's awesome but soto brings so much to the table pure power what he's 44 home runs and baltimore is no joke anymore yeah and if you're a team that don't uh, that is looking to get soto and you don't get soto this is the guy you can go after you can say you know what instead of spending 600 million let me get uh alex bragman santan there i can use that 600 million and get four guys or three guys uh, he's, but he's going to have to wait to get his contract because he plays the same position as Juan Soto. Everybody's going to go half after him early, especially the teams with the big pockets. So Santander, unfortunately, he's going to have to wait. Uh, I have him going at 130 million over six years. He is 30 years old. Uh, that's just what I mean. And you said it, he's an under the radar guy. So if you're a team like, let's say Seattle and you go out and get Santander, that's not going to make too many Mariners fans, you know, proud. It, they will understand that he's a good ball player, but he's not that big marquee name, despite what he has done, you know, on the field. So you're going to get a little bit of a discount for him. And that's why I'm giving him 130 over six. Yeah, he's a 240 hitter. Here's the thing. He's a 240 hitter. 
Uh, he's going to get on base. He's got, he had 41 doubles last year, 25 this year, 44 home runs, 28 home runs, 33 home runs going backwards. And so this is a dude that puts the ball over the fence and, and gets doubles, 102 RBIs this year, 95 the year before, 90 basically the year before that. So he's going to, if there's guys on base, he's going to drive them in. If you're in Seattle, yes, he doesn't make waves. He doesn't sit there and go, oh, my God, I'm going to mark this guy, and he's going to be the face of the franchise. At the same time, you you add him in a lineup. This dude is, is an absolute stud, and with him with and with a couple guys in front of him, maybe a guy behind him, he's an absolute menace to hitters right now. Or sorry, to pitchers right now. Yes, he's a little bit on the older side, a little bit on the older side, but that's usually what you're getting at free agency, first-time free agents uh, popping out there. You're going to get 30-year-olds. That's what you get in Major League Baseball. But again, five years, you're going to get, I think, five really good more years out of them. I honestly, and I and I talked about this with a buddy of mine with the Blue Jays, and I said, like, the Blue Jays are sitting here. They've got all the money in the world. They've represented an entire country. People don't understand that. They represent an entire country, not a city, not a state, a country. And they've got more uh, true fans than any other team in Major League Baseball. Okay, just straight up, they do. Uh, they've got over 30, 40 million, more than 30, 40 million fans that they can count like straight up that they own and no one else does. Their problem is, is this dude is putting up numbers like an AL East right fielder should, and they, right now the Blue Jays do not have that. I see him as a Toronto Blue Jay um, through and through. I, I, I don't think there's another team that's going to – I think if I'm – for my money, you make a huge offer to Soto, and you immediately make an offer to him, and if he takes it, you take him. And if you take it, then you switch, and exactly what you said, you go get five other free agents for the money you're going to give Soto – and you go get five guys and make your team better. I think the Yankees could do this. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I saw a guy on, on Twitter, or whatever, talking about it. I already had the idea. We've already talked about it. Like, what's the aggregate, right? And that's Moneyball. That's all Moneyball talked about. Do you take Soto or do you go get Bregman? Do you go get Santander? Do you go get a, a starter? Uh, and then do you go get a reliever? And you're like, dude, we are a much better team. We just solved four problems for the price of one. Um, yep. And, and that, to me, is, is kind of like what the Giants tried to do when they waited and waited and waited and brought in Chapman and brought in all these guys. Like, at the last second, you're like, okay, well, you're actually just answering a couple problems. Uh, it didn't work out. Not Those guys did great, but the, their bigger problems didn't work out. But you got to look at this guy. He's, a, he's an all-star. He's getting better. I am jumping all over Anthony Santander and, and trying to get him on my team. I agree with you, and Toronto would be a great place. I didn't really give them that much of a chance to sign him because I think he's going to end up going back to Baltimore. However, if Toronto wants him, I think they're going to have to add $20 million to the offer that I gave him of 130 It'll have to be 6 for 150 just because of the taxes in Canada. There is no chance he's going to leave that kind of money on the table. Yeah, it's getting closer, though. It's getting closer. I mean, again, you're, you're talking about, new, you know, you're talking about sitting over there in, in Maryland. You're sitting in New York. It's per, it's not crazy different, but again, I, there is a difference, and, yeah. and it's something to, to definitely talk about and, and agents talk about. But like you're looking at these teams, Washington. You're, you're looking at Nash, the Nationals and, and Baltimore. So you're looking at anywhere in there, right? Virginia, Maryland, whatever that is. And you're looking at New York. Like you're gonna get hit no matter what if you're in, in that grouping. But yeah. Toronto will get you the most. But. I do think there's a lot of value there, and he's underrated where the next go dude on this list, I don't know if he's ever been underrated. He's been a World Series champion over and over. Like This this dude is as as frustrating as it gets. He has gotten it done. God damn. And I'm going to give him like the lowest. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mo hum this because he's, he's, he was on that Astros team. Alex Bregman. Alex Bregman at number seven, and, and he's with that group of cheaters. At the end and of the day, though, he is a free agent. and he's a It's so good funny player. that you mentioned the cheating because that's the reason I'm giving him such a low valuation. I think a lot of people around baseball are worried about how inflated his numbers were while they were cheating. You could see last year he started off very, very slow. He ended up getting better. Um, I'm giving yeah, him... A bad timing for, for go walking into your free agency year, right? Yeah, for sure. I'm going to give him $190 million over eight years, and I think he's going to stay with Houston. I don't think that anybody is going to open up the bank to get him. I think it would be a good story if he finished up with Houston, but in order for him to do that, he's going to have to take less. And you're talking $190 million over eight years. 
what, what is that? 100 million divided by eight. You're looking at an AAV just short of 24 million. I think that's fair. He is 30 years old. That's going to take him through 38. So what do you think about that valuation? Well, here's the thing. He, he started off slow, right? He started off slow. But in 2022, he had 23 home runs. 2023, he had 25 home runs. 2024, he had 26 home runs. He had 259, 262, 260. Um, you're looking at OPS plus of 134, 122, 118. That's gone down a little bit, but not crazy. It's gone, definitely gone down. But his, and his OPS has gone down a little bit. So, yeah, you're seeing a little bit here and a little bit there. But I, I, I've talked across to people across the league, and they're like, this dude is legit. Um it's not inflated. Yes, his greatest years were right in that smack dab, like across the face in those cheating years. At the yeah, same fake. time, like this this dude has had there's some good things. And what what, what kind of pops my mind, and this is interesting, he had 119 walks in 2019. He had 44 this year, but he had 92 last year. So like something changed this year where he wasn't seeing the ball the same, wasn't getting walked. I mean, his walks were in half. That's an yep. interesting thing. And when you're still hitting the same amount of home runs, though. So there's a lot of value there. And I'm sitting there going, okay, something changed, something, something, something moved. Um, for me, it, it's a tough question with the with the Astros, right? And this is the thing we've asked with the Astros before is how do you how do you recover from losing some of these guys? Yeah. How do you recover from losing a Correa? From from losing a Verlander, from losing a, a Cole, from losing a insert name here. Yeah. Do they have somebody in place? Because they probably have in the past. Every single time we've said that, they've had an Astro sitting there in minor league baseball about to become the next star of major league baseball. Um, I don't see him going anywhere besides the Astros. I, I just think he is going to become a career Astro. I think that that means something to him. I, it just seems like he is an Astro through and through. I just don't think he's going to get the money he wants in free agency. I don't. I think he's going to be end up being one of those guys that sits and holds holds and holds and holds i don't see him I, I might be crazy on this i don't see him being an early signer i see him being a guy that wants more money than he's necessarily worth at this point or more years than he's worth that might be more appropriate way to say it the dude's a stud incredible incredible third baseman great hitter but there are some things that you're sitting there going okay like are these is this like the beginning of the going down period where like Santander is going up, like there, it's clearly going up. And so that's one big question for me, but I see this as the, the Astros are going to get him back. They're going to, Altuve is going to make a phone call, whatever it is. He's going to want his boy in that middle of that lineup and he's going to end up staying in Astro. You give him the money. I said, is that too much, too little? Give me your thoughts. 190 over. Uh, I give it six it? years. You give it six. I give it six. If you're going to go like, like 24 million over six years, so I'm going to sit there. That that's 120, 118 million dollars. Um, is that? I think my simple math is oh, 130 something, 140 something, 140. I, I give it 140 million over six. I think he's going to wait and and get the till the end of my career for a cheaper price. That's just what I think. We'll, we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, before we move on to the next guy, since we're alive, we are live, we have somebody in the comments who has a question. Drake wants to know, do free agency signings typically happen the day free agency opens? Drake, absolutely not. This is not like football. This is not like basketball. They wait. You're talking about life-changing money for the most part. It's not a $30 million deal. It's a $400 million deal. You will see most of these guys wait one month, you know, six weeks, sometimes even more. Dave, you agree? A hundred percent. And that, that's the thing about it is, is Major League Baseball, especially what we've seen over the last four years, five years, it's gotten later and later and later in the process. Usually the winter meetings, which are the first week of December, is, is it, I think the first week of December, whatever that is, winter meetings are usually when things pop, especially when you have a year like this year where we have a couple pretty big boy free agents yeah you had the biggest of all boys last year in otani of a massive guy this year at soto everything waits kind of for him and they had judge what was it two years ago and so usually everything waits for that first domino to fall but in major league baseball everything usually is slow it's it's a lot free agency is a long period i mean last year the hottest time was probably that week before the season started yep. was was that actual like 
the hottest free agency time. And that's the thing about Major League Baseball. I can go and go the whole time. I think, I'll be honest, I think in basketball, there's so much behind the scenes working with the agents that are illegal activities. In Major League Baseball, they do not, like, there's no point. There's no yeah. point to be doing it. Like, it's too high of a risk. No one does it. So, uh, Waka signing to me was pretty easy and clear. It's the team that offer, already offered that and wanted to just wait for day one, and, the, and they agreed on terms. He's the only yeah, one that's signed. One it's one of those things. You love us. We love you. Let's get it done today. No reason to wait. Yeah, here's fair money. This is fair yeah. money for you, fair money for us. Organization keeps moving. Why wait? And that that already been talked about. I guarantee you that had already been agreed upon like for oh, yeah. two weeks. And and that team's free to negotiate with them all they want. They can talk. No one else can until the World Series is over. Yeah, Waka should have done what uh, A-Rod did a few years ago and make it all about himself and announce it right during a World Series game. Right? How about that? Yeah. Um,